In the end, I ended up not doing it. It was too hard. It was too time-consuming. It was simply too much of the good stuff. And I tell you, I can take a lot of the good stuff. But this ended up even too much for me. I've long been looking for a solution to an ancient problem. The relationship between time and what we do with it and the way they impact each other in various ways. I always wear a frog mask. I like the animal. I like its symbolism and its endless possibilities of images it makes in my mind. It also reminds me of this Japanese sea monster called a kappa. It's funny because the apparel brand and because it was the name of a DJ I met in Japan that somehow thought DJ Kappa would be a cool name, even though it was way more awkward. He never played any gigs, but he was really kind, and I traded a next tape with him, which was really good. What a shame. But yeah, somehow the image of the frog evolves into the picture of this Kappa dude, more than the actual sea monster. Oh well. Is that a consequence of time as well? In this misty landscape of the mind, you easily get lost and or confused, that's for sure. Wander around for days on end in pouring rain. I always remember landscapes covered in rain, the damp surroundings making me move. But the frog also reminds me of my home, the place where I grew up. There were tons of frogs, and we were told they all stemmed from a single 1,000-year-old frog. Can you believe that? A frog so old, its skin had become a mixture of stone and organic tissue. Its eyes always looking out for danger, to protect its rare tribe of ever-old amphibians. Was it big? How big was it? I can't remember any of the stories mentioning its size. Blown away by the harsh weather, I realized I had to find cover. Quickly. Maybe just a motel nearby. Just anything, really. Preferably with four walls and a roof. But really, anything to cover me from this weather. The rain was coming down hard as I tried to find some kind of shelter nearby. The cold water drops running down my forehead, down to my eyes, into my eyes, making me cry in an artificial way. I wasn't sad. Then the drops running down my chin, over my mouth, tasting them with my tongue. A cold, clean taste. Then, a shadow reveals my destination. A huge pine tree seems to give shelter, and after I have leaned against it, its warm birch bark for dry comfort, it says this to me. Have you never seen the frog with stone skin, the only living spirit older than me? I'm not sure if it was some kind of hallucination or a real voice coming from the tree. I look at the sky for any kind of affirmation. I notice it has gone from the darkest gray afternoon to the darkest dark blue night. The rough wind still trying to pull me away from the sheltering tree. Have you ever tasted the frog with the skin of stone? It asks me once again. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. I slowly muttered in confusion, too tired to have the dilemma of considering it being a hallucination or not. I mainly just wanted to be quiet and covered. Before I had thought about it, I felt all the arms of the tree pushing me out hard into the cold, brutal rain again, the sky emptying itself completely over me, for a reason I had no clue about. As by sheer intuition, I screamed. Oh, I forgot. I have tasted the 1,000-year-old frog. I spread out my arms, even though I wasn't sure why. Hopelessness or a kind of friendly gesture. I remember I felt like being stared at. Like a fool, trying to lie about something impossible. Like flying or living underwater. You are lying. I hear its faint voice between the drops falling on the soaked black earth covering the patches of green grass. No, no, I remember where I found it. I truly remember the taste of it. Rain hitting hard on my sore shoulders. 
I try to stare back as bravely as possible. Prove it, it commanded in his resonant deep voice. I walked closer to the tree again, without being pushed away. My mouth is as close to the brown, warm bark as possible. I was on my way home from school, years ago. It was weather not far from this. Only lighter, and I had my dad's raincoat on, dark green. In the left pocket, there were two cigarettes and a lighter. Even though he had been promising my mom he'd stop smoking for a very long time. I was on my way home as I saw a big stone I had not seen before. It was placed down by the lake, far bigger than me. I wanted to climb it. Then suddenly, as I walked around this big piece of rock, I heard a kind voice. You cannot see me, so close your eyes. Who are you, and why can't I see you? I said to the rock. Then the deep, kind voice replied, Because I am the core. And you can't see me because the core is always concealed by layers of reality. Now put out your tongue and come here with closed eyes. I sighed and closed my eyes, tongue out, and walked towards the stone. A sensation of excitement and anxiety of what might happen to my tongue. Suddenly I could smell some sort of flowers, and my tongue touched a wet, breathing, rough surface clearly moving, though subtle. Then it jumped past my face. I felt its size. It was surely bigger than my face as it jumped off the rock. When I opened my eyes, a big chunk of the stone was missing. I sat on the rock and smoked one of my father's old cigarettes. I had to think about this experience. It was a small tickling sensation in my mouth. When I later came home, Mom had made pork chops. Good ones. If time is the ocean, I've forgotten how to swim. That's how I said it. That's how you remember it. A discrepancy between tool and situation. The pool hadn't been clean for a long time as I looked at it from inside the living room. Almost gray in its surface. Maybe if I bought the house, I could get a pool cleaning included. It should be an easy deal. I couldn't take my eyes off that pool. The chlorine blue mixed with the brown leaves and the light green algae. The slightly dusted surface. Was there something moving down here? Probably not. Well, honestly, probably. But I wasn't really going to buy that house anyway. The yellowing walls, the dark rooftop hiding every sleazy detail you could imagine. Why should I have to deal with that? The pool, though, had something magical about it. Like a pond or something. Well, it's easy. I take a photo of it with my phone and make it into the screensaver. Gives me time to ponder about it and its otherness. A dog. The kitchen also needs some work, so... I couldn't tell him, that one thing. It froze my tongue every time. You couldn't tell me how. Reversible, mute, staring, blank eyes. It's not a part of me any longer. The lie has grown into my bones, into my own deep personal code. Doesn't even need a password. It's not hackable. It's just there, like the screen, the plastic covering the screen. I wouldn't have lied if I found a way to say it, of course. Maybe spare him the details. But I have told him about the transformation, at least. The fact, the one thing I couldn't leave out. Just so he had a chance to know me now, compared to before. But, 
He thought I was the same as always, of course. The damp environment slows down everyone round here. I don't know what it is either, but I should tell him. I ought to, which again makes me want to. I guess it's too late now. The show has moved on. The consequence of my line has grown automatically into his, without him even noticing it. The screen. The obvious. The ghost. See, the good stuff can be defined by various parameters. Some worthy of mentioning could be pushing, some kind of gratitude, lack of boredom, missing the point, eating the dust, forgetting the scratch, jump the highest fence, and so forth. The level of abstraction contradicts the level of not good stuff. So the more fucked the situation, the better the chances for the so-called good stuff. Make sense? But also the higher the fucked up level, the higher the risk for overdoing it. Simply revealing of the magic for your consciousness. That's what we call the time cut. It's the cut that defines where it goes from the best of good stuff, and thereby a ferociously racing time, falling to the melting point, where, worst case, the time simply stops and you're dead. Or, not dead, but just out, completely, never to return, out. More likely though, a two hour period turns into a day or two. Shitty, but acceptable. A far stretch, a haze of purple fever, flashing green lights, deep rumbling sounds, sweaty forehead. Harsh, but at the same time, a too soft and saturated situation to really focus on anything. A leap of some kind, I'd say. Some days it works, other days it just falls apart. But you know all about that, right? 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 You know